In today's world, making connections with others is crucial to personal and professional success. Whether you're attending a networking event or meeting someone for the first time, making a positive impression can set the stage for future interactions. This is where the book How to Make People Like You in 90 Seconds or Less by Nicholas Boothman comes in. Boothman, a former fashion and advertising photographer and expert in neuro-linguistic programming, has spent decades studying how people connect and communicate. In his book, he provides a guide to forming fast and meaningful connections with others in just 90 seconds or less. The book teaches readers how to strike up a conversation with strangers and make them like you, as well as how to decode even the most subtle gestures. By mastering the art of forming connections quickly, readers can gain new friends and expand their social world. Many people are afraid of being awkward or alone, and these fears can prevent them from reaching out to others. However, Boothman's book provides practical tips and techniques to conquer these fears and connect with others on a deeper level. Whether you're an introvert or extrovert, how to make people like you in 90 seconds or less is a handy guide to improving your social skills and making meaningful connections with others. So, whether you're attending a party, job interview, or just meeting someone new, you can ace the art of being likable and make a positive first impression. Idea 1. The Science of First Impressions – What People See When They Meet You First impressions are crucial in our personal and professional lives. Research has shown that people form their first impression of you within the first 90 seconds of meeting you. But what factors go into their assessment? Studies have found that first impressions are comprised of a variety of assessments, including intelligence, trustworthiness, success, and status. Some factors are predictable, such as the influence of designer labels on people's estimation of success or popularity. However, other factors, such as gender, ethnicity, attractiveness, and the need for glasses are not so easily controllable. Research has shown that latent biases, such as sexism, racism, and classism, also play a role in the formation of first impressions. For example, studies have found that people tend to rate speakers who are white, male, and attractive as more charismatic or powerful, while people with tattoos are often rated as untrustworthy, less attractive, and more aggressive. Additionally, Participants consistently rate people with round, baby-like faces or feminine features as more trustworthy. While we cannot control our innate features, we can take steps to make a positive first impression. By understanding the science of first impressions, we can be aware of the factors that may influence how we are perceived and make intentional choices about how we present ourselves. In the next chapter, we will explore practical tips for making a positive first impression and overcoming latent biases. Idea 2. The Power of Body Language. How to Make a Good First Impression. Have you ever heard the saying, actions speak louder than words? When it comes to making a good first impression, this couldn't be truer. In fact, research shows that body language is often a more powerful communicator than words, especially within the first 90 seconds of meeting someone. But what exactly is body language, and how can we use it to make a positive impression? Body language is the nonverbal communication we use to convey our thoughts, feelings, and intentions. This includes things like facial expressions, gestures, posture, and eye contact. When used effectively, body language can make us seem approachable, confident, and friendly, which are all important traits when meeting someone for the first time. One way to use body language to your advantage is to consider the difference between open and closed body language. Open body language suggests that you are relaxed, approachable, and willing to engage with others. Closed body language, on the other hand, indicates that you are guarded, defensive, or uninterested in the other person. To convey open body language, try standing with your arms hanging loosely at your sides and your body turned towards the other person in an inviting manner. Leaning slightly towards the other person communicates that you are interested in them and what they have to say. And don't forget to maintain direct eye contact while smiling. This shows that you are positive and willing to engage in conversation. Remember that all of these nonverbal factors set the tone before you even speak a word. So, once you've established a positive vibe through your body language, it's time to turn your attention to the spoken portion of your interaction. 
Don't overthink things or worry about saying the wrong thing. Instead, start with a simple, hi, how are you, and introduce yourself with your first name. And if you're worried about forgetting their name, repeat it back to them immediately afterward. By using open body language and simple, friendly conversation starters, you can make a positive first impression and set the tone for a successful interaction. Idea 3. Establishing Rapport – The Power of Attitude in Conversation Have you ever felt nervous or unsure of what to say when meeting someone new? Building a good rapport with others can seem challenging, especially when you don't have an instant point of connection. However, by cultivating a positive attitude towards conversation, you can establish a close and harmonious relationship with almost anyone. The key to building a good rapport is to focus on your attitude towards the conversation. According to the author, there are two types of attitudes, useful and useless. A useful attitude focuses on what you want out of the conversation, while a useless attitude concentrates on what you don't want. When you approach a conversation with a useful attitude, you think about what you want from the interaction. This could be getting to know the person better or making a positive impression on them. On the other hand, a useless attitude is characterized by negative thoughts, such as anger, frustration, or irritation. For example, getting upset at a fast food worker for getting your order wrong would be a useless attitude, as it is unlikely to achieve anything constructive. By adjusting your attitude towards conversation, even in moments of conflict, you can change the tone of the interaction. Instead of being confrontational, try to think about what you want from the conversation and approach the other person with kindness and understanding. Not only will this help establish a positive rapport, but it will also increase the likelihood of achieving your desired outcome. In conclusion, building a good rapport with others starts with your attitude towards conversation. By focusing on what you want from the interaction and approaching the other person with kindness and understanding, you can establish a close and harmonious relationship with almost anyone. Idea 4. Strategies for Building Rapport Through Conversations when it comes to building rapport, conversation plays a crucial role in establishing a connection with others. While nonverbal communication sets the tone for your first impression, the conversation takes you the rest of the way. In neutral situations, starting the conversation on the right foot is essential, and one way to achieve this is by asking open-ended questions that invite the other person to talk freely. The 5 W's and an H rule is an excellent conversation starter that psychologists, conversation experts, and professional interrogators use. This rule involves asking questions that begin with who, what, where, when, why, or how. These questions are great for starting conversations because they invite dialogue and cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. For example, let's say you're sitting next to a stranger at a new cocktail bar and both of you have been waiting for your drinks. You could apply the body language tips previously mentioned, adopt a useful attitude, and ask the person, so, what drink did you get? This open-ended question invites the other person to reply in detail, and you can build on their response to keep the conversation flowing. Asking questions that build on what your partner said is another way to keep the conversation flowing. Show interest in what the other person has to say by asking follow-up questions. For instance, if they say they had a stressful day at work and came to the bar to relax, you can ask them about their job. Remember that forming friendships or enjoying a casual chat doesn't necessarily require having something in common with the other person. In fact, many people who are very different from each other maintain close friendships because they enjoy each other's company. So, keep an open mind and show interest in your conversation partner to connect with them and leave a positive impression. Summary. Making a good first impression is important in many aspects of life, such as meeting new friends or networking for a job. However, the pressure to make a good first impression can be overwhelming and lead to feelings of awkwardness and fear. Luckily, there are strategies that can help ease this pressure and make a positive impression. One effective strategy is to practice open body language and positive non-verbal cues. This means standing or sitting up straight, facing the person you are speaking with, and maintaining eye contact. Additionally, smiling, nodding, and leaning in slightly can all convey interest and friendliness.
Once the first 90 seconds of meeting someone have passed, it's important to keep the conversation flowing. Starting with a friendly introduction, such as a simple, hello, and offering a handshake, can help set a positive tone. Remembering someone's name is also crucial, as it shows that you are paying attention and value them as an individual. As the conversation progresses, asking open-ended questions can help keep the dialogue going and demonstrate your interest in the other person. Open-ended questions are ones that cannot be answered with a simple yes or no, and instead require a more detailed response. This can include questions starting with who, what, where, when, why, or how. By following these tips, you can make a positive first impression and establish a strong foundation for future interactions. Remember that everyone feels some level of pressure when meeting new people, and it's okay to be yourself and let your personality shine through. Now, thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, and in case you want to buy the book, use the link in the description, trust me, you won't regret it.